One of them is the CEO and actually the mother of the LD, so we are so happy to have Steffi here. Steffi, we missed you. <laughs> and the other one, she, uh, she's the Minister of Justice, she's heading the negotiation with the Palestinian Authority toward, hopefully, peace. And she was a candidate for the, for the Prime Minister of the State of Israel, maybe, and I hope so, one day, she will be. Sipi Livni, thank you very much with us today. Thank you, Ali. This was a wonderful introduction. Thank you, dear audience, for being here. Who of you is from abroad? Look at this. Sipi, thousand ambassadors for Israel came here to stay with Israel, to do a statement, to learn here, to do business, to do strategy, and we are very happy to be here. Thank you for coming. Sipi, one year ago, we've been here together, and you we were very optimistic. I, re I remember. Listen, I live here, I cannot be very optimistic. <laughs> but you are It's a tough neighborhood, though. And you said peace could be a feasible option. Now, a year later, what happened? What, how was your year? How, how do you feel? Uh, basically, I believe that peace is our need. It is our responsibility for uh, next generations. So it's not a matter of being optimistic or pessimistic. It's something that we need to do. Uh, we negotiated during last year with the Palestinians, uh, with the involve, deep involvement of the United States, Secretary Kerry, and we highly respect them for, for doing that. But unfortunately, we didn't end, the negotiations didn't end with um, a peace treaty, with an agreement. Uh, but there is an American framework that they didn't put on the table until now that represent all the answers, not the answers, but maybe all the parameters uh, for all the core issues that should be the basis for any future negotiations. Uh, I regret the fact that they didn't put it on the table. Uh, Israel, by the way, said yes, but we also agreed that this should be the basis, but we will raise our um, ideas also during the negotiations. And the Palestinians didn't give an answer to this yet. And my, what can I say to my Palestinian colleagues is that the only way to reach an end to this conflict and a peace treaty is through negotiations room. And all the ideas of going to the United Nations, acting against Israel, whether it's in terms of terror or in a diplomatic manner, outside of the negotiations room, is not, is not something that can lead to a real peace based on uh, agreed uh, or negotiated um, agreement. Uh, and I hope that we would relaunch the negotiations. It's a very good opportunity to do it now. Uh, we are after the operation in Gaza. It is clear that uh, by terror, the Palestinians would get nothing from Israel, so the negotiation room is open. So do you see negotiations the only way to change things? Couldn't be there other ways, for example, business, mutual businesses? Uh, okay. Uh, the direct or bilateral negotiation is the basis it cannot be replaced by doing business or by economic peace, as some of my colleagues in the Israeli government uh, uh, offered in the past, but it is complementary. I mean, we can sign an agreement, but in order to change the people's minds, people need to know each other. Businessmen need to know each other. They need to see that on the other side, people are thinking basically uh, the same in terms of being part of uh, the global village, in terms of economy, uh, being human beings, and it's not just the enemy or the others on the other side uh, of the border. So we need to have more and more connections uh, between young people, people to people, one to young, and also businessmen to, to businessmen. But without any real agreement, it cannot survive. What advice would you give young people to connect? 
to? To connect from both sides. Uh, basically, there is, you know, a few years ago when uh, it was just the beginning of the internet and uh, the cyberspace, I was thinking that having this is a great opportunity to have young people connecting each other without even the need to cross the border, uh, to stop at uh, the crossings. Uh, they can meet virtually each other even without leaving their home and know each other. And uh, unfortunately, this is not being used as I hoped that it would. Um, and more than that, unfortunately, sometimes the networks and uh, the internet site are being used for incitement, propaganda. Uh, and these are uh, what the extremists are doing in order uh, to change people's minds and to become more extreme. And I believe that this can be also an opportunity to find the common denominator between young people, teenagers all over the world. It's not about the conflict. It's about completely different things that can connect them. Whom of you is doing business with the Palestinians? <laughs> Only one, Oli, is raising two, three. So I, I would like to say something very strongly on this, that even though we have this national conflict between Israel and the Palestinians, the welfare of the Palestinians, and the future Palestinian uh, uh, state or this Palestinian authority, uh, economic uh, is our, of Israeli interest. We are not against it. We support it. We believe that this can help. We don't want to see these huge gaps in GDPs. So this is something that Israel is willing to help and we believe that it serves our interest as well, not only the Palestinian interest. But interesting, we, you, you say this and only three or four people here doing it. So maybe there need more, more initiatives or more incentives to trigger businesses between Palestinian, um, Palestinian companies and, and your companies. I think, as you said, the internet is beyond barriers. Yes, but, but there are also other initiatives like the BTI, like, like those businessmen in Israel that uh, uh, are doing uh, uh, biz not only business, they are meeting together, they know each other, they are investing uh, in uh, one of the other's uh, company. And they are also talking about the conflict as part of the connections, but I believe that this can connect people as well. Interesting. Um, Sipi, what I really wanted to know, you mentioned in an interview that the settlements are a threat for the security of and the future of Israel's youth, uh, generate, next generation. Can you, can you explain this a little bit more? Yes. Uh, I believe maybe it would take some time because I wanted to share with you the changes amongst Israel society during all these years. Because in 1967, Six Days War, where Israel was attacked, we um, entered and uh, uh, part of this victory was to come to places that are part of the Jewish history uh, that we are connected to. And this is especially in the West Bank. And I still remember as a young uh, child the first visit to uh, Rachel's tomb and uh, um, um, of course, the, 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 the Western Wall and all these places that are part of our history, part of the Bible. So at first, the idea was to have to live happily ever after, all together between, West, between Jordan River and Mediterranean Sea, Israelis, Palestinians, Jews and, 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 and Muslims. But it didn't work. So basically... Why? Why didn't it work? It didn't work because in the end we have two national movements. One is Zionism that represents uh, not only the history but the right of the Jewish people for a state of our own. And on the other, on the other side, during all these years, a new uh, national movement was created, was established, and this is the PLO, the Palestinian uh, National Movement. Uh, in order to get a state of their own. So the choice for every Israeli is between having one state between Jordan River and Mediterranean Sea. But the meaning is, from my perspective, 
is losing the um, the nature of Israel as a Jewish state in terms of uh, being homeland for the Jewish people. And therefore, I believe that the right thing to do is to base the end of conflict on the idea of two states for two peoples. And I believe that this serves the, the interest of Israel and the interest of the Palestinians as well. Uh, and by saying so, we need also to understand that uh, we need to keep in any agreement Israel's security needs. But the settlements are part of another vision, and this is the vision that we used to support in the past of having one state for everybody. Uh, so I believe that part of the understanding that two states for two peoples is the answer, we need also to understand that new settlements activities doesn't serve this interest. And more than that, since it is not being understood properly in the international community, this creates also criticism against Israel, and we are losing uh, the possibility uh, to, to have the, world, the support of the world in our security needs, something that we truly need, because in the end we cannot afford just uh, throw the keys to the other side of the border how for good. We need to to, to check and to, to have in each and in, in, in every agreement uh, Israel security needs being taken care of. I can see this, but what I don't see, and it's, it, I ask me every day, there is a big rising of everywhere in the world of a need of a religious vision. And here in Israel it makes it very urgent, this um, clash between a secular society and a religion society. In, in, in the Arab countries, the same. There's the religious fanatics and there's the secular. Why do you think is it so? Why in our time we are looking, people are looking for a bigger vision? Why is it right now? Why does it happen? And well, how can we... How can we combine secular, um, secular life with an um, religion, open-minded religion? Well, um, truly, I, I, I don't think that I have the answer to this, to the why. But it is clear that we have two different, completely different trends in, 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 uh, in the world now. On one hand, we have uh, the cyberspace, we have uh, uh, those places that which are new and progress is, as you said, without borders. So this is progress, this is the new century, but simultaneously the world is going back thousands of years uh, to the days of a very vicious and cruel religious wars against the infidel. And this is something that we see in the Arab world today. And this is also something that is not connected to states. Uh, ISIS is fighting against infidel, whether they are Muslim that are not practicing Islam the way they want them to practice Islam, uh, against, of course, against Christians, against Jews, no matter where they are. And this is a threat that we all need to, uh, uh, to work together in order to meet this challenge. The conflict between Israel and the Palestinians is a national conflict. And a national conflict can be solved. Uh, we can do it. But a religious conflict, unfortunately, is unsolvable because for them, for the extremists, religious extremists, uh, for them the only way is for us to change our religions or to, to make a suicide. And this is, with all due respect, not an option. So we need to fight them on one hand, and on the other to find a way to uh, end, hopefully, the national conflict between Israel and the moderates on the Palestinian side. And by doing so, we can have a new axis or a new relations with the pragmatics and moderates on the Arab world that are hesitating in, in uh, uh, having connections with Israel uh, because of uh, the conflict between us and the Palestinians.